the government of India received an intelligence report indicating that Pakistan would attack in the West within the next few days. This proved to be right. The attack came at Chumb on December 3rd, 1971. 10th Infantry Division holding Chumb was planning an offensive of its own and it was totally surprised by the Pakistan attack. A desperate battle for the defense of Aknur raged in this sector. Pakistan also launched an attack on Poonch and the 33 Infantry Brigade of one corps had to be sent to reinforce Poonch. In response to the Pakistan offensive, India decided to launch a counter-strike with one corps in the Shakargarh bulge. Pakistan's one corps was responsible for the defense of the area. 15th Infantry Division was deployed from Chenab to the Deg Nadi and was responsible for guarding the approaches to Sialkot. The 8th Infantry Division was responsible for the defense of areas further east including Zafarwal, Thamtal, Narawal and Chakargarh. The defenses were well prepared. There was an anti-tank ditch along the international border on the Shakargarh bulge. Besides that, all major towns had anti-tank ditches that were integrated into belts of defenses running from Deg Nadi to Zafarwal, Thamtal and further south. On the Indian side, the initial plans were altered a little after some brigades of one corps had to be sent to Poonch to reinforce their defense against Pakistan's initial assault. The new plans and objectives were as follows. 39th Infantry Division, under Major General B.R. Prabhu, was given the task of advancing between Basantar and Karir Nadi and capture Delra and Chakra by D plus two days, and thereafter capture Shakargarh. The 54th Infantry Division, under Major General Pinto, was given the task to advance in the area between Deg Nadi and Karir Nadi and capture the Zafarwal Thamtal line. 36th Infantry Division was to stay in reserve until the enemy made its move in the battle. Operations in the Shakargarh bulge commenced in the night of December 5th, 1971, with both 39th and the 54th Infantry Division launching their attacks simultaneously. In a quick initial success, the 39th Division captured Pakistan's border outposts during the morning of the 6th. 39th Division then continued their advance towards their next objective, the village of Harar Kalan. Harar Kalan was well fortified by the enemy with strong defenses set up in the village. They also had anti-tank minefields set up around its boundaries to stop any ingress from the Indian side towards their defense positions. 39th Division, before launching an attack, would first need to secure a safe lane from their tanks to pass through the minefield and then form an attack on the enemy positions. They started their advance towards Harar Kalan, but as soon as they hit the minefields, their progress got bogged down. The progress got bogged down in an attempt to clear the minefields. The engineers worked to clear out the minefields under heavy fire till the afternoon of December 7th, 1971. Night of December 7th, 39th Division moved its leading infantry battalion to assault Harar Kalan. The enemy, with its strong defenses, fought fiercely and pushed back the attack. The attack failed with considerable losses for the Indian side with 24 killed in action and 65 wounded. The 54th Infantry Division, after launching its attack, captured the border outposts on the night of December 6th and continued their advance to their first objective, the village of Dharman. Pakistan had deployed one squadron of 20 Lancers with Shafi tanks, one squadron of 33 cavalry with Patton tanks, along with infantry elements to stop the Indian ingress. Pakistan Air Force was also quite active in the region. 54th Infantry Division advanced towards Sarman and soon they also hit their first minefield. Their objective now was to establish a bridgehead in Bari Dharman area and secure the minefields for their tanks to pass through safely. A bridgehead is a strong position secured by an army inside enemy territory from which it can form further attacks into the enemy territory. In a typical fashion, the advancing side, upon countering an obstacle like a river or a canal or a minefield, creates a secure zone at the other side of the obstacle by first sending in their infantry. This secure zone generally 
400 meters by 400 meters or 400 meters by 800 meters is called a bridgehead. Once a bridgehead is created, the next step is for the advancing side to make arrangements for their armor to safely cross the obstacle. So, if it's a minefield, that would include clearing out anti-tank mines from the field and mark the safe passage. If it's a river or a canal, use military bridging equipment to create a bridge to facilitate the tanks and other mechanized infantry to pass through to the other side. Time is a huge factor in this whole process because the enemy is expected to attack the bridgehead within 30 to 45 minutes of the advancing parties creating the bridgehead. So if the armor is not able to reach the bridgehead in time to reinforce the troops, the bridgehead could be lost. The task of creating the bridgehead was given to 16 Madras, supported by four horse. They commenced the attack at 2.30 a.m. December 6th, 1971. The first enemy opposition was encountered very quickly. During the enemy attack, 16 Madras captured a Shafi tank and a soldier who had a map showing the layout of the minefields in the area. This created an opportunity for 54 Infantry Division to quickly clear out the minefields and form an attack. And 16 Madras launched an attack at Dharman. Within few hours of fighting, by 7 a.m. of December 6th, the positions in Dharman were captured. After capturing Dharman, 16 Madras resumed their advance further south towards Bari. Soon they came across another deep minefield north of Bari. In a calculated risk, the trawling of the minefield was carried out by 405 Field Company in a dust haze before last light. Two Centurion tanks were placed at vantage points on the home side of the minefield to provide covering fire. Another Centurion tank followed the trawl tanks to provide intimate fire support. While the trawling was going on, the following tank noticed three enemy tanks in a hull down position and opened fire. One enemy tank was immobilized while the others withdrew. The trawling was completed by 6.30 p.m. and a squadron of tanks was inducted into the bridgehead. 405 Field Company had breached a 500 meter deep minefield in just one hour. An attack was launched on enemy positions leading to Bari and after a hard fight, the positions were captured by 10.30 p.m. of December 6th. One enemy tank, two machine guns, and a map case showing alignments of minefields were also captured. Using the minefield maps, 405 Field Company completed the breaching and marking of the minefield by 2 a.m. on December 7th. The next objective for 54th Division now was Bari. 16th Madras moved to the north tip of Bari and moved a combat group to probe it and capture it if possible. The combat group left at midnight and approached Bari by the west. At 1.30 a.m. December 7th, the combat group attacked Bari from the west. The enemy were completely surprised by the speed and direction of the attack and fled their positions. Bari was captured before first light of December 7th. 39th Infantry Division, after failing their first attempt to capture Harar Kalan frontly, decided to outflank the position by sidestepping 2,000 yards east of the village and attack the enemy from there. The armored infantry column reached Shahbazpur rather late in the afternoon of December 8th after a difficult approach. Then they hit the minefields there. They hit the minefields there and the troll tranks started to breach it. Two of them successfully got across, but the third one blew up on an old mine. Due to the delay in reaching the west flank of Harar Kalan, it was almost dark now. The minefield had not been cleared yet and Major General Prabhu, commander of 39th Infantry Division, anticipated an attack from the enemy tank hunting parties on their positions. So they left the two forward tanks and trolls to be abandoned in the minefield and called off the attack. With this, the second attempt at taking Harar Kalan by 39th Infantry Division also failed. On the other side, 54th Infantry Division, with the capture of Bari, enlarged their bridgehead and built troop strength south of Bari with the objective of pushing further south towards 
the Zafarwal Dhamtal line. 16 Madras, with the support of a company of 18 Rajputana rifles and a squadron of 17 horse, launched an assault and captured a small village south of Bari. But at this stage, the failure of operations conducted by 39th Infantry Division to capture Harar Kalan and subsequently Delra and Charka began to affect the operations of 54th Infantry Division. The enemy had a strong pivot position in Delra and Charka, held by a squadron of armor and infantry troops. Until this position was reduced, the flanks of both 39th and 54th Infantry Divisions in their subsequent advance were under serious threat because the enemy could launch attacks on the flanks of both 39th and 54th Divisions. It became imperative for the Indian side to clear this area before 54th Division could continue with their operations southward. Delra derived much of its strength from a fortified position around the Charka village and the enemy had developed the Charka defences with considerable skill and ingenuity. Delra, with a protective minefield in the front and strong defences set up around it, assaulting this position frontally was unthinkable. But with 54 divisions' rapid progress along their thrust line, there was an opportunity to attack Charka from the rear. So the objective of capturing Charka-Delra positions was signed to 54th Infantry Division. 